What's up, crypto gang? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack our cryptocurrency and blockchain education. If you guys are brand new here, we do a small little giveaway at the beginning of every single episode. And today's winner is Infamous Bitcoin Bull. Thanks so much for commenting on the previous video, Infamous Bitcoin Bull. I just sent you some crypto. On this episode, I'm going to be breaking down some of the top blockchain networks that are supporting NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Just describe real quick what fungible is uh, for everybody that's brand new to NFTs. When you're comparing different assets, fungibility is very relative. So for example, you know, if you have a $1 bill, you could replace that $1 bill with another $1 bill, and that makes it fungible. When you're talking about non-fungible, you have one asset that cannot be replaced. A broad way of looking at non-fungible assets, you could look at event tickets, you could look at in-game items, you could look at even handles on social media like Twitter and Facebook. They're all non-fungible digital assets, also domain names. So you have all these really cool different aspects of what you can apply this technology to. If you guys are brand new to the channel, I'm a co-founder of Grow Your Base, which is a platform that allows you to automatically accumulate NFTs in your portfolio in less than two minutes. You can literally set it up and it is extremely simplified and easy to do. There's no sort of technical aspect to it that you need to understand. Very low barrier to entry. Our goal is to onboard hundreds of millions of people into the NFT space over the next couple of years and doing so through simplicity. Now, if you're in the space currently, you understand that gas fees are extremely out of control right now. A lot of companies have put pause on transferring any assets on the Ethereum network because it is so expensive. For example, earlier today, I sent two NFTs to a member of our team that was distributing them out to our Nifty Pass and our Whale Pass members. And that costs $17 to literally send two assets from one wallet to another wallet, which is not sustainable guys. So one of the things that I wanted to cover in this video was some alternatives. There are a lot of really cool projects out there that are trying to make inexpensive platforms that are allowing people to transact. Without further ado, let's dive into my list of some of the ways that you can avoid these fees in the NFT space. Currently, the first one on the list is Wax. And this is a platform where they've partnered with Tops, the trading card uh, company from back in the day that you could collect baseball cards and things like that. They've partnered with William Shatner to do you know, a series on his pictures. So many cool partnerships that they've done, including like uh, COGS that are like POGS on the blockchain. Very exciting project there. But a lot of cool old school collectible brands have partnered with Wax because it's just so easy to use. They have short little addresses. It's not like a long strain like you have with your Ethereum wallet. And it is very fast and cheap to use. So with that said, there is a platform that is very key in the adoption of Wax, and that is Atomic Hub. Uh, it's called Atomic Assets as well. And this is where a lot of people are going to transact. The way that I learned about this was through my guy, Joel Com and Travis doing their project, Blockchain Heroes. They launch and then they also launch on Atomic Hub. They are working directly with the Wax Foundation and they drove a ton of user adoption to the Wax network. So really exciting to see the Atomic Hub launch and have that be kind of the crux of where people are coming in. Uh, and they're really kind of flourishing on the exchange there. People are buying and selling pretty rapidly on there. Very similarly to OpenSea, but except it's on the WAX network currently. I'm assuming they're gonna add some additional networks, but it's a really clean interface. I'm gonna be linking to it in the description below so you guys can check it out. But it's a very well thought through way of allowing people to interface with the wax chain next up is hive now a lot of people have probably heard of the controversy around the steam network jumping to hive and that was because justin sun from tron who's another large network he tried to acquire steam and it was just this chaotic situation where uh, he was very much trying to to stop the delegated proof of stake consensus from going on. People were moving tokens around. People were trying to 
uh, halt the whole thing from happening. He was colluding with all these different exchanges to make sure that the, the takeover could happen of the Steam network. Ultimately, people jumped over to this new network called Hive that is extremely active. Hive has done a great job of maintaining that community that was originally on Steam, and they've jumped over to Hive very much under the uh, you know concept of being decentralized. Everybody wants to be part of this community-run uh, network, and they've done a great job. And one of the key partners here that I've gone back and forth with, I met in uh, New York when I spoke at NFT NYC, is uh, Agroed, the developer of Splinterlands. Shout out to him uh, for doing an incredible job developing on top of Steam and then jumping to Hive. I think he doesn't get enough credit uh, for doing that because Splinterlands is a massive game. We partnered with them at Grow Your Base and uh, they are a massive game and they moved over to Hive uh, entirely. So it's exciting to see that transition happen. And they are, by far and away, the most active game uh, that I have seen on Hive right now. But Hive is doing a really good job of uh, you know, fueling a lot of these different types of projects. 3Speak is on there. DTube, DTube is on there. You have uh, your Hive blog. Peaked is on there. A lot of really interesting projects have started to crop up on there. And then, of course, you have your marketplaces. I believe there is a, a new NFT showroom is on there that's exciting. But overall, I'm, I'm excited to see a community-run network like this jumping on to uh, Hive and really taking control of the situation that happened with Steam and making it into an NFT wonderland. Next up, we have EOS. Now, you guys may be familiar with this because they raised like a billion dollars and it was a huge deal when they raised a bunch of money. And NFTs have been popping up on here quite frequently. And this is another inexpensive way that people can transact. There was a little bit of an issue a while back uh, with an EOS bug, I believe, where people were getting, I think it was like two or three um, bonuses for referring people through a, a dApp that launched on there in EOS tokens. So people were gaming it and just spamming the network. And I remember the fees skyrocketed. I wanna say this was earlier in, 2020 or late last year, I believe, where fees were just going through the roof and it was chaotic. And we've partnered with Upland in the past. I interviewed Dirk, the founder there, and uh, you know they were talking about a lot of that, uh, the issues that came with that dApp that rolled out on the mainnet. So people were just spamming it, getting a bunch of you know, US tokens and making, making money essentially by spamming it. But I think that that was the only example of where fees skyrocketed on EOS and right now uh, it's pretty stable as far as I can see and some of the really notorious games on there are Prospectors that's a very well-known game and then Upland of course like the Dirk created and some of the other ones are around uh, you know the the DeFi space right now and some of these uh, racing games and things like that but so overall I do like EOS uh, I think it's a, a great project for NFTs to really get some adoption there but the next one is going to be IOST. Now, my boy Crypto Stash, he talks about this a lot. And I think that they have some good aspects to their network that they're rolling out with NFTs. And they have some pretty fun games on there so far. They have Hero Rats, Block Arcade. They have a lot of different gambling ones that I'm not that big of a fan of. But I do think that taking the mobile space, which is a lot of focus on IOST in terms of how I understand it, they have like shooter games, uh, battles with like balls and things like that flying around on the mobile device. So one of the things you guys aren't really going to see me talking much about on here is gambling games. I, I think that there is a place for those, of course, in a decentralized world. But at the same time, I'm mainly focused on things that can be related to crypto artwork and crypto gaming, like in-game assets, because billions of dollars are spent on in-game assets within the, the gaming space. And I think that that translated over into NFT land is a big deal. In fact, 2.4 billion in revenue uh, was selling costumes for people in Fortnite, which is a massive game, obviously. Also on top of that, you have your ticket sales for events that is projected to be over $60 billion by 2025. So in the next five years, you're looking at $60 billion. And just the idea that domain names are now coming online as somewhat of an NFT, uh, you do have the ability to 
uh, get onto different networks there. So it's exciting to see these different projects rolling out on these different chains. But once again, I wanted to focus on those innovations, not necessarily the gambling side of things. Once again, of course, you have the standard that is Ethereum, and I think that Ethereum fees will come down eventually with Ethereum 2.0 coming out just around the corner. I think a lot of people are very excited for that because it is the standard. A lot of people started on ERC-721s, and that is very much where things kicked off with things like CryptoKitties. And I love the idea of, uh, you know, these other networks coming in and innovating, making cheap alternative uh, experiences for people and that allows for scale and people to innovate on top of it i do think that there needs to be some interoperability here between these nft networks they all have to play nicely together just to bring more and more people in that's one of the things that we're really trying to accomplish at grow your base that i've mentioned multiple times before with the low barrier to entry for people uh, and being blockchain agnostic so we can really toggle between all these networks and hopefully there does become a day where Cosmos or something like that comes in and they're saying, hey, we're gonna allow everybody to talk together and play nicely together. You can send NFTs to each other. Things like Engine are very interesting around developing in that space uh, with interoperability as well. But it's very exciting to see all of these things transpiring, but it still is brutally bad with fees right now. And everybody in the space, shout out to you guys for you know buckling down and really sticking with it even though these fees are astronomically high and it just does not scale there are these options that i've talked about in this video but of course leave a comment with other options that you're familiar with and that you want me to look more into i love all these different types of networks that are coming out that are supporting nfts i think that it is a very powerful space that's going to be 10x 20x over the next couple of years here just based on crypto art alone and your in-game assets alone those are huge markets uh, that people are going to get into and where ownership is is not even really talked about uh, the fact that publishers just own everything uh, within these different uh, industries. I think that it's such a such an important aspect of disruption here. So that is it for this episode. Slap a like if you like this NFT content. I'm going to be doing a lot more over the coming uh, weeks, months, and years here probably. So slap a like. Don't forget to be subscribed and I will see you guys on the next episode of Hot Crypto.